Good evening. Today I want to talk about cables, specifically the cables you use to connect your radio to your antenna, presuming you have an antenna set up outside somewhere. Now normally you bring the antenna in using coax, and then if you're going to connect it to a portable radio, you'll have an adapter of some sort, or you'll have soldered on a plug, that will give you the, uh, the ground of the coax on the sleeve uh, and the uh, center conductor of the coax on the tip of uh, an eighth inch uh, mono jack like this one. And that you'll then plug into, you know, the antenna socket on your radio. And if your radio has one, like the PL330 does, like my old Grandig Yacht Boy uh, 300 PE does, like the Sanjian 909X2 does, or in the analog world, um, the R9700DX does. That's a great solution. But cheap and cheerful radios, which I really like, don't tend to have uh, it's got a headphone jack, but it's got no antenna jack. And that's true of all these radios. Some of them don't take in external antennas very well, like the Leap Mini, but some seem to do okay with them, like the Protecus V115. So, what do you do? Well, many real antennas come with these little adapters, which take the center conductor from the plug here, connects it through to a little clip, which you clip over the antenna. Like so. Right? Problem solved. Or you could use, a lot of people use, um, use alligator clips or whatnot. But the problem with that is it's only taking the center conductor here, the, um, the shield on the coax is not connected. How much difference does it make? I don't really know. But when I bought the DGEN 31MS antenna, which I've done another video about, it came with this connector. And this connector is interesting because this is the tip and this is the shield. And the instructions for the, for the antenna says to connect the shield to a convenient ground for better reception. Seems like a pretty straightforward way of grounding a portable radio system. And as we all know, sometimes touching a radio changes its performance, maybe this will make a difference. So I'm going to set something up as a ground. I'm not quite sure what, but I'll figure that out. And, uh, and go from there and see if hooking and unhooking the ground on this makes a significant difference. For this test, I'm going to use the uh, PL330 because A, it's a good radio, unlike some of the others, which are more questionable. And second, uh, we could also try it with the antenna jack and see if that makes any difference as well. So let me set up a ground wire and I will come back. Okay, I think I have what we need hooked up here. So this is a piece of aluminum wire which is hooked to what I've confirmed is a good ground. And I'm not an ideal ground for radio purposes, but it'll do for our tests, I think. What I'm, going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this into the antenna here and I think what we'll do is we'll do three ETM scans. We'll do one with this hooked up here to the antenna. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And this one hooked up to my ground here. So we'll do an ETM scan of the shortwave bands with that, see what we get. And then we'll do an ETM scan with the um, with this disconnected from the ground and see if it makes any difference. 
and after that we can try plugging this into the radio and see if that makes a difference as well. It's about 10 o'clock, it's just about seven minutes after, so things shouldn't be going on and off the air. I don't even know if it's a good night or not, I haven't actually had a radio on yet, but hopefully it's not too bad. And what we're just really going for is uh, station count, I think, at this point. So we'll power on the radio. We'll put it in ETM. Oh, it's already in ETM. All right. And we'll do the scan. And I will come back once that's done. Okay, this is coming down towards the end here on the uh, PL330. Um, just a couple of things to say about this as it's going on. First, this is an MLA30 Plus antenna, so it's an active antenna. You might think it might make more difference on a different sort of antenna. That might make a difference. So we have, well, let's see, it's going to tell us in a minute, 30 channels received. Okay, so let's say ground connected, 30. All right, now I'm going to disconnect the ground from here. And I'm going to run the ETM scan again, just like we did, and see what happens. And I will get back to you. Let's see. 27 channels. So that's, that's three less than we had with the crown connected. It seems unlikely that we're losing channels as the night progresses, but of course it's possible. All right, so the next one is going to be unplugging this. We'll remove it from the antenna, and we will plug it in to the antenna jack. And my cable's a little short here, so I'm sorry this is at the edge. And then we'll do the ETM scan again. Okay, and now we'll do it for a third time and see what happens. What did we get? 28 channels. So, so far, so far, we received 30 channels with the ground connected and the antenna. With the ground disconnected, 27. And from the jack, we got 28. So what I want to do is let's rerun the first test. So I'm going to unhook from this from here, hook this up as before. So that's on the ground wire. And this is on the antenna, like we had before. Let's make sure that's actually hooked into the ground wire. That's actually on the antenna. And we're going to run the ETM scan a third time, so with the ground connected, just to see if we get that number again or something similar. Okay, more than halfway through here and probably through where in the band we're actually going to find anything at this point tonight. I'm getting the impression that the upper bands are closed. Um, it says it's searching for number 29, so it's found 28. So at the moment it looks like it's performing exactly the same as the jack and that the difference between these, between the um, earlier ones may just have to do with the difference in timing from when I ran the test. That will be quite interesting. Okay, so what number do we get? 28. And so that agrees with this number. Let's run it with the ground disconnected again just because. I should probably be reordering when I do these, but maybe we'll do one more search with each of them and see if that makes some sense. And one thing that can happen is, depending on where you are in the uh, cycle of the time signals, particularly the American time signals, they will get caught by ETM, and in some parts, uh, to parts of the cycle, it won't necessarily get caught. So. You know, that could easily be two up or down the whole thing, and it would be presumably all more or less on the same cycle. So you'd hit 10, you'd hit 15, right, kilohertz, and 5 kilohertz as it went up. So potentially that could explain differences 
in timing. But I've got to say, just looking at these numbers here, I'm not seeing a huge difference. Anyway, let's let this one run and we'll see where it gets us. Okay, coming to the end for the ground disconnected. And at the moment it looks like it's got 32, so it's hunting for number 33. Well, let's see. Let's get to 26 megahertz. 32 channels. So, 32, okay, so let's run it with the antenna plugged into the antenna jack. And that will give us one last comparison. And I will come right back to you once this is done. Okay, how many did we get? It looks like 27, yep. Okay, so we got 27. I mean, I might do it again, but I think my answer is that this is all sort of within variation of what you get at one time or another. I really don't think plugging into the antenna is gonna outperform the antenna jack and so my guess is you know some number right around 27 28 28 29 is what it's pulling in at the moment and then you're getting variation for the reasons i described you'd have to get a lot of numbers in order to get a meaningful um, average so I'm not seeing, just based on this very simple little test, a lot of difference between using it with the ground connected and the ground disconnected. I do want to do one more thing, and that is to hook it back up to the, uh, to the antenna using this, and we'll hook it up, and we'll connect the ground to start with. And what I want to do is just pick a station. Doesn't really matter what. Did that sound right? How we need the old test route? That's really the key. Terms like. Okay. We'll choose Radio Habana. Okay. What's hap what happens when we undo the ground? So let's look at the signal to noise and the signal. I'm not hearing much of a difference in there. Okay, so let's try something that's a little stronger so that we get less. Let's try something really strong. Okay. So this is NHK Japan rebroadcast out of Isidon, France. This just booms in like local radio here in Toronto. You know, 20 dB of signal to noise. 25 is about all you get on local AM anyway. Okay, let's see if it sounds any better. So, my conclusion is I don't think it makes the slightest bit of difference whether you have the ground connected or not on these little portable radios, and that's probably because the radio itself is battery powered and not connected to anything. But it's interesting though that sometimes the capacitive coupling of touching the radio will make a difference. Like it sure looks like it is here, right? 71 dB. Oh, 
It sure looks like it, right? How about if I touch the ground wire and do that? Yeah, I don't know, right? I'm, I'm not convinced this makes a bit of difference. Anyhow, hope that was useful. Um, it's just, we'll just say inconclusive. Thanks for watching.